Okay, everybody, I said I would make a video of uh, my LQ46 liter that I'm getting ready to swap into my 2007 JKU Wrangler. And it is going to be bolted up to an MV3500 transmission. Uh, if you uh, haven't seen that video yet, definitely check that out. I go over what you need to do to bolt it up. Uh, it is a direct bolt on, but you need to do some things with the uh, throw out bearing and uh, to, to make everything fit. So basically on the engine itself, uh, I've had several people ask me what all has been done to it. It looks really nice, it looks sweet. Technically this is basically a stock LS that's uh, had, a, it's had a few bolt-ons, okay? So the biggest thing I did to this was 799 heads. Uh, they come with the factory 317 heads. It's a very low compression motor, uh, 9, 9.4 to one, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I wanted to bring a little more horsepower up without having to do forced induction. So I put 799 heads, it now has 10.5 to one compression ratio. So definitely gonna add a lot more power. Um, I have the factory truck intake, which I like the look of and they clean up really nice. I have a 102 millimeter throttle body. Now before anybody says anything on the throttle body, I've watched many videos in the past. I can pretty much tell you that adding a 96 millimeter throttle body or a 102 millimeter throttle body does not gain you any power. Maybe one horsepower at the most. I mean, it's. I've, I've watched several dyno videos. The only reason I did this 102 millimeter throttle body, it does look good, it does look really good, but uh, the big thing is, is I'm switching uh, obviously from drive-by uh, wire to drive-by cable, okay? Uh, you can get a factory drive-by cable truck intake from like a late 90s Chevy Silverado. The problem is uh, people want 100 plus dollars for these things, which is crazy, especially since they're all nasty covered in oil and pitted up I'm not doing that. Uh, I do budget swaps. So uh, this right here, I believe I got off eBay for like 60 bucks, okay? So that's the only reason I got the 102 millimeter throttle body. It's not really given in anything other than a, a cool look, okay? And it is, because it's new, uh, I'm sure that this mechanism works very nice compared to an old wore out factory one. So I did all ICT billet relocation kits. Um, this right here is an F body uh, power steering pump and an F-body pulley. Besides that, I have an LS3 water pump, which is a good upgrade, uh, push a lot more coolant for you. There is some spacers that you can get off Amazon that uh, will space that out where it needs to be if you're doing the LS3 style water pump and you want the style that has the larger pulley like that. So besides that, we have, uh, there is, uh, this was separate, this tensioner pulley here. I can't remember what I paid for. It might've been like 40, 50 bucks. But there's a tensioner here. Aside from that, the uh, this pulley does come with it, the idler pulley. This is the factory truck alternator, factory truck uh, crank, uh, crank pulley. I'll get it out here in a minute. So basically this stuff is set out where the factory truck stuff was, the same distance. It just looks much better, much, much better looking, much cleaner. The factory truck Bracket uh, accessory brackets are just terrible. I mean, they look absolutely horrendous. I have factory truck intake. I have factory coils. Now these coils have been replaced, uh, so they are new coils, but uh, I have upgraded the wires. Uh, that actually does do a lot for them. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, your spark transfer, it, it helps uh, keep the heat down and insulation's better. It's, I, I recommend getting some, some better coil wires. But uh, as far as the headers go, I have headers from Patriot Exhaust Systems. If anybody has researched yet on headers for a JKU swap, they are outrageous. Uh, I mean, you are talking, you know, fourteen to sixteen hundred dollars for a set of headers to be able to fit and swap into a JKU and LS motor. Again, I do budget swaps. I'm not dropping twelve grand in an LS swap. Not happening. I refuse to pay that much for a set of headers. Never have, never will. Uh, these particular headers, I believe, are like 600 brand new. I found them on eBay in an open box. They're brand new, unused, but they had been opened and partially bolted up, and I paid $399 free shipping. So, uh, if worst case scenario, if you want these particular exhaust headers, which I do recommend, because uh, they are very heavy built very thick i mean if you look at the thickness of those they're very thick uh, very heavy built they're ceramic coated i definitely recommend those these are actually for an s10 ls uh, swap and an s10 is what these headers are for 
but the particular style mounts that I'm using, <clears throat> uh, which you see these needs tightened here still, I'm getting ready to do that here shortly. Uh, but the particular mounts that I'm using are, uh, they're a set of mounts that have a very large uh, rubber, uh, I don't know what you would call it, I guess an absorber basically. And it comes on here and slides back and forth so you can basically adjust your engine where it needs to be. Because this particular swamp, I do not have to cut or weld anything whatsoever. The engine mounts that I have, and I will show you those real quick. I will also leave something in the comments as to where I got these. Uh, so these particular engine mounts literally drop right in to your factory engine mount parts. And then this shaft on this nut here slides up in those little slots. You put your nut on, and once that happens, you slide your engine forward and backwards to get your engine wherever you need it before you bolt it down. So it literally retains the, the factory engine mounts. You don't have to cut or weld anything off. It's absolutely phenomenal. I've done several engine swaps, and there's nothing I can't stand more than having to hack and cut and weld on your frame. So you don't have to cut or weld anything uh, using these particular mounts, <clears throat> and uh, I highly recommend them. And I haven't actually dropped the engine into the check fitment, but it, going off measurements, it looks like it's going to work phenomenal. But uh, the problem you run into, I have a set of headers here that I've already used. So these ones here, they're very nice uh, stainless steel headers. Um, now I bought these, they're, uh, they're called tight truck swap headers. Uh, those particular headers look really nice and they tucked very tight on the engine. However, because you have this very large um, rubber absorber here that needs to slide back and forth, it was in the way. So these particular ones here, uh, the outlet's way back here and it goes straight down. So you've got a lot of movement room, adjustment room for your mounts. So that's why I chose these particular headers. Um, Another problem, if anybody's researched into the JKU swap on an LS, is if you have any kind of headers or anything that comes back at an angle, it hits your firewall. So these were literally perfect. They dump like straight down, uh, almost straight down, and they leave all that room for the adjustment on the engine mount. So highly recommend that. Um, if you're going to use a 700R4, then uh, you will have to get an adapter spacer, uh, but you can bolt that up to it as well. You just have to use a spacer for your uh, torque converter. Now, if you're going to use a manual like I did in V3500 transmission, uh, basically what I just did was took a 4.8 flywheel and 4.8 clutch off a of 4.8 LS and bolted that all up. And then I did a hydraulic throwout bearing setup. So this is all ready to bolt up. Um, I'm going to bolt all this in actually here after I get done making this video get it all bolted up and I'm gonna start working on swapping it into the Jeep. If anybody has any questions on this, uh, definitely leave me a comment, subscribe if you like. 